Shabbat Shalom to you too. You don't need me to prime your pump, do you? You have been uh, spending time in the Word all week, I'm sure, daily, yes? Right? Every day you've been reading the Word and been spending intimate moments with your Savior, and you've been hearing God's voice and uh, praying and interceding for others. So you're, you're ready to roll, right? You had... You had Shabbat dinner with the family and uh, already spent some incredible time with the Lord. So uh, this is just going to be an overflow of all that you've uh, done this week with the Lord, yes? Kind of, sort of. My my prayer is is first and foremost that that God is happy that you know through our our time spent with him together as a family that he enjoys this time I know he does um, I, I hope you know how much God loves you I hope you know that and I also hope you know how much his heart breaks when your heart breaks It's, it's hard to fathom, and it's hard to quantify, and it's, it's very difficult for me to illustrate. Um, but with that being said, I, I hope you know that when you're struggling, um, just how much God is struggling with you and for you. So much more than um, you've ever experienced in your own life. Uh, by the same token, I, I hope you receive a blessing uh, today. Um, I hope you leave here with a, a desire to get even closer to your Heavenly Father. And um, I hope you leave with such a blessing that somehow, some way throughout the week, you continue to pursue the Lord. And through that pursuit, um, the people you come in contact with will, will receive a blessing as well. That's my prayer. Um, you know that I always read a psalm. I'm going to read one today, one that you're very, very familiar with. But I want to um, ask you to consider this a prophetic psalm. I don't think too many people read it prophetically, Psalm 27. Um, and it's, it's 3,000 years old, written by God through King David. But um, I want you to consider that Yeshua is speaking. And I want you to consider that he's speaking about his future suffering for our benefit. Okay? So although although you can read this in many different lights and you can see yourself saying this, sometimes it's, especially with this psalm, it's, it's so pure that it's hard for me to see myself saying it. But let me read it to you and think about Yeshua saying it about right before He's ready to go to Golgotha, okay? And he's in the darkest time he could possibly be in. And he's not like us because he's perfect. And he didn't deserve what was coming upon him. And here this crowd is coming after him. And there's complete darkness. He's surrounded by darkness in the Garden of Gethsemane. And can you imagine him saying this? Adonai is my light and my salvation whom do I need to fear he's he's convincing himself because he is afraid you follow he is fully man fully God he is afraid but he's convincing himself and you have to convince yourself do you understand that otherwise your fears your circumstances uh, the scenarios the devil they're gonna take their shot at you you understand they're gonna do all they can to convince you and if you don't speak out of an overflow from the Spirit of God to your soul, you're going to be overwhelmed. He was becoming overwhelmed. He was sweating blood. Hemodrosis, it's legitimate. The highest level of anxiety. And then he says, wait a minute. The Lord is my light 
and my salvation. And he's asking his soul, whom do I need to fear? you got to talk to yourself. Adonai is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? You follow? Now they're, they're coming. He sees the mob. And then he says, When evildoers assailed me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumble and fell. Remember? John 18, 6, Who am you looking for? Yeshua, I am. Bam. They stumbled and fell. Now they're surrounding him. If an army encamps against me, my heart will not fear. If war breaks out against me, even then I will keep trusting. And then he's saying here, I, I didn't ask for much. Just one thing. Wouldn't it be nice if we were one thing people? As opposed to the myriads of things we want. He says, just one thing I have asked of Adonai. Only this will I seek, pursue. Only this. To live in the house of the Lord. He couldn't wait to get back home. Can you, I mean, do you feel the same? Especially in the time you're living in? That's okay. If he felt that way, shouldn't we? It's right to feel that way. Only this will I seek. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. This is temporary, man. That's permanent. That's forever. This is a blink of an eye. Unless you're temporal. And then if you're stuck in the temporal and in the natural, you're going to struggle. To see the beauty of the Lord and visit in His temple. For He will conceal me in His shelter on the day of trouble. He will hide me in the folds of His tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be lifted up above my surrounding foes. And I will offer in His tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Listen, when he resurrected and he was all alone, what do you think it was? Do you think it was, amen? What do you think it was? Hallelujah! Thank you, Father! He says, I will sing. Sing praises to the Lord. I will. It's my choice. you got to make a choice. I can't make it for you. I can push you, I can push you, and I can get you to sing. So what? You're going to sing later? You're going to sing tomorrow? You're going to sing the rest of the week? I'm not going to be around to tell you to sing. And then he says, listen, out annoyed to my voice when I cry. Show favor to me and answer me. My heart said, if you seek my face, your face, I don't know, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. If you feel sometimes like God's hidden his face, you're in good company. Don't let the enemy beat you up. It happens. You ain't perfect. You can't, you can't fool me. We all go there. Nothing to be proud of, but we go there. My advice is don't stay there any longer than you have to. Do not hide your face from me. Don't turn your servant away in anger. You are my help. Don't abandon me. Don't leave me, God, my Savior. Had my father and mother have left me, I don't know who will care for me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Don't give me up to the whims of my foe for false witnesses. It was false. It was all falsified. It was a kangaroo court. They've risen against me. Also those who are breathing violence. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Guess what? You know who else was yelling crucify him? Your sins and mine. Don't put it all on them. If I hadn't believed that I would see Adonai's goodness in the land of the living. 
If I hadn't believed, he would have been a goner. But he did believe. And we need to follow suit. Are you a follower of Yeshua? Then believe. And I just love this last verse. Because it's almost like Yeshua is giving us one final bit of advice. Put your hope in Adonai. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Yes. Put your hope in Adonai. Think about it. What, what, what could you put your hope in? Tell me. Tell me something out there other than the Lord that you could legitimately put your hope in and not have that hope shaken. What guarantee do you have in life? It's the choice of no choice. God makes it easy, doesn't he? Isn't that nice of him? And then once we get to know him, it, it's not a choice by default. It's a choice by absolute, unequivocal decision. It's a delight to trust the Lord. Right? Isn't it a delight? <laughs> It, it just brings such joy and such peace. I don't know how anybody who has a good relationship with him could be miserable. If that's the case, something is wrong with your relationship. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. If Paul could go through stuff that nobody here has ever gone through, not a day, if he can go through that junk and in a dungeon write, hey, Hey, my peeps in Philippi, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. If he could say that, in what's your situation? Did he have special dispensation? He was a human being like you and me. He's just a guy. A guy, just like you. You're just a guy. You're not impressive. I'm not impressive. You're just a guy. But he's the God. And because you know him, and because he's known by you, then you got no excuse not to rejoice today. None. Not a one. You ready? You sure? You want to give him some glory? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, guys, for the next couple of hours, I just want you to keep one thing in mind. Had it not been for the Lord's grace and mercy, not one of us would be standing here today. And if nothing else, that's worth praising Him for, yes? So, Father, once again, we come into your presence humbly and boldly. Humbly and boldly, feel like we should crawl in and not look up. And then all of a sudden you say, why so downcast, kid? Come to daddy. I love you. Thank you for your forgiveness once again. Once again, we did all kinds of junk this week. Had all kinds of stupid thoughts. Didn't yield to your Holy Spirit at times. Caught a bad attitude for no reason. Lost it. Sound familiar? And still, what a great God. We repent, He wipes it clean, and we get on with it. 
I just, I just want to praise Him. I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing else today. I don't need nothing else today. I don't need Him to do nothing from here on. What He did for me this week, I'm ready to praise Him. If He didn't show up, I'm still going to praise Him. I don't need Him to do anything. I didn't come in here to receive. I came here to give. I came to praise Him. He don't got to do nothing. But you know how it works with our Father. He's not a cheapskate. He's not a taker. You know? You know those people. They're cheap and they're takers. Always got their hand out. Not God. Mm -mm. No matter how much you give him, he will always give you more. It is always, always, always mutually beneficial in his economy. So we sit here today, and we're going to lift him up on our praises. And you know what he says? It's not going to be one-sided, because guess what? As you lift me up, I'm going to inhabit your tabernacle. And just between you and me, if I could leave here with a little more of him, I'm going for it. Father, be blessed. As, as, as you are such a blessing. Be blessed. Kindly enjoy our praise. Just enjoy it. Okay? Because we're going to enjoy your presence. Father, bottom line, we love you. And bottom line, I believe this is a crew who are trying their best. And, and we're not perfect, which you obviously know. And, and we fall short at times, which you know. But you know what? We get up and we keep on keeping on. And that's what Beth Yeshua is all about. I can't wait to see your smile at the end of today. We love you. And we bless you. In Yeshua's name, amen.